Welcome to the first Sustainable Space Logistics Digital Symposium. It's a great honor to have today, we have now 140 participants. My name is Emmanuel David, and I'm the Executive Manager of eSpace, EPFL Space Center. And I will guide you through this three days event. I'm really happy to start this symposium. Today on day one, we will explain what is the vision of Sustainable Space Logistics. We'll find out the current relation between space and sustainability. And we'll have a panel discussion with our partner, Spacewatch Global. On day two, we will look on the ongoing revolution gripping the industry. We will also feature the experience of DHL, experts in logistics. On that day, we'll have a panel discussion with our partner, Euroconsult. And on the last day, on day three, we would like to conclude on the perspectives. We will highlight Swiss success story, clear space. We will look at the legal and policy framework and we'll give the voice to the younger generation. On that day, we'll have a panel discussion with our partner, Secure World Foundation. Before starting, I'd like to share with you a few housekeeping rules. Questions should be asked through the chat and I will then transmit them to the panelists or the speakers. Videos are recorded and will be available on our platform on the, the evening, but also after on our YouTube channel. The bio of our speakers are all on our website. So if you want to know more about their background, we invite you to go and to check on the event website. Before starting, I'd like to know a bit better who you are. We've set up a mentee to understand who you are and where you're from. There's a link in the chat where you should click on. Otherwise, you can go on the website www.menti.com and you type the following code of the event 1595495. I repeat the code is 1595. Four nine five. This should be also in the chat. Now let's see the results. I see that we have people from France, Switzerland, of course, as we are based in Switzerland, the Netherlands. Don't be shy. Huh? A bit more since. A lot of Europeans I see. Spain also. Scotland, so still Europe, UK. So a lot of Swiss, a lot of French. 30 more seconds to vote. Colombia, Vietnam. Wow, it's going fast. Latvia, Greece, 15 more seconds to vote, US, India, I see also, Italy, big crowd also from Italy. Cool. Two more and stop. So this is you guys today from Switzerland, Italy, France, Germany, mainly from the US also, I see, but also we have people from Antarctica, crazy, Colombia, Spain, Latvia, Netherlands, Vietnam, Australia. So welcome everyone. Thank you also for those who woke up early or are staying up late to be here today live from EPFL in Switzerland. Next question. We'd like to know also to better understand your background. I think also it's important information for our speakers to know who they are talking to. So let's see, we asked if you were from academia, research, industry, government, NGO, also from media or anything else, others. At eSpace, we aim to have an interdisciplinary crowd. So we're happy that we have a big variety of people. So I see that we have a lot of people from academia, industry, indeed, research, few from government, NGO.
few more minutes until we close this poll. So we can better understand. I see that 56 people voted. We are now 164 in the crowd, so a few more people. For the people who join later, we are currently doing a quite little poll through Menti, so you can connect on the website www.menti.com. And then you have to enter the code for our poll, which is 1595495. -495. And then you can also sign up. Closing the poll now in three seconds. And that's it. So big crowd from academia, 29, and research, five. Industry, 22. Government representatives also, seven. Three from NGOs. No media, no others. Thank you very much for letting us know who you are and where you're from. In order to kick off, kick off our event, I would like now to introduce you, Renato Kaplun, the head of the Swiss Space Office, and Professor Kneib, the head of eSpace, for their opening remarks. Renato, the floor is yours. There we go. Good afternoon. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, first of all, good afternoon and, and thank you for joining the Sustainable Space Logistics Digital Symposium. Also the people from Antarctica uh, wondering what time zone you're in right now. Um, I'm pleased to address you a few introductory words together with Jean-Paul Kneipp. Um, well, let's start with the question, how did we get here uh, to talk about space sustainable space logistics in the first place. And I, I'd like to start by giving you uh, uh, my very personal retros retrospective on this. Being part of an ESA fostered student group called the Student Space Exploration and Technology Initiative, our, our main concern 20 years ago was focused on how to get an object up into space. We, we quickly learned, and, and this may come to a surprise, that actually Ariane Espace at that time had ride share opportunities on Ariane 5 called the ASAP 5 platform, which was visionary and well before its time, but ultimately failed as Ariane 5 mostly flies into geosynchronous transfer orbit, which is even for a technology demonstrator, and especially a student technology demonstrator, not that exciting of an orbit as you typically are flying commercial of the shelf electronics and uh, these small spacecraft and the, their electronics gets quickly fried as you go through the Van Allen belts in a GTO orbit several times per day. Now, looking back, that was not the only initiative. There were several initiatives targeting miniaturization. In the US, a new shoebox size satellite started called CubeSat which had been put in place by Professor Bob Twiggs in Stanford, uh, was launched for the first time in 1999. In Europe, small SAT activities were also picking up. For example, Sir Martin Sweeting of Surrey University was working together with a group of radio amateurs on microsatellites. Um, ESA had launched its, its first proba satellite in October 2001 and, and scores of students we're working on a reasonable number of CubeSat projects all across the world, mostly wondering if and when these satellites would be launched. Uh, amongst others, EPFL was working on the Swiss Cube satellite starting 2004-2005. What is remarkable is that at that time and well into the last decade, small satellites, which for me are satellites below 500 kilograms, were mostly seen as toys and gadgets for simple research purposes only and without any prospect of generating large business prospects. From today's perspective, one can note that traditional satellite manufacturers were and maybe are still stuck in the famous innovators dilemma. While the newcomers were able to reduce life cycle and accelerate the speed of innovation, helped in a sense by significant reductions in launch costs, Large satellite manufacturers were working, for example, on increasing the number of transponders on each spacecraft and increasing the mass of spacecraft, and by the way, also subsidizing the small sat launches uh, with cheap ride shares. Now, 
essentially these big companies missed out on the advent of broadband telecom services and on the rising of small satellite constellations. As the newcomers today are cannibalizing market share of industry incumbents. The industry is undergoing uncertain shifts. shifts. A typical question is, will the constellations prevail or not? Um, are we going back to small or large satellites? These are the typical questions uh, which are asked. Now, the fact that money is quite readily available at the moment, we are in a, in a situation where uh, interest rates are extremely low. Uh, just to give you an example, junk bonds in the US are well below 4% at the moment. Um, this helps to fund all sorts of initiatives and is sustaining capital flows, flows towards higher risk ventures with all the good and bad aspects which come with that. Um, now, the difficulty to launch things into space at the turn of the century are worries of the past. Today, we can launch more than 140 satellites in a single launch. And the question the students were facing at the turn of the century on how to put up things into space has become mostly irrelevant. Uh, in short, I'm convinced this trend is not going to stop anytime soon. And I'm convinced that unless there is a significant exogenous shock um, where companies either start going out of business for whatever reason, or where we actually see operations of spacecraft severely impeded or endangered by orbital debris, things will continue to accelerate from here onwards. This is where sustainable space logistics comes into play, where our space community starts thinking beyond the silos of launch systems, satellites, re-entry vehicles, but takes a holistic view looking at the entire life cycle, not only from an economic but also from a sustainable perspective. And I'm very grateful that EPFL has been pushing this initiative, as well as for the highly distinguished speakers who have accepted the invitation to, partic to participate in this symposium, and for all the participants who are willing to face the challenge of sustainable space logistics in the future. And with that, I'd like to thank you and hand over to Jean-Paul and wish you a very fruitful symposium. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I guess you can hear me. So I'm Jean-Paul Kneib. I'm professor in astrophysics and I'm director of the EPFL Space Center, uh, what we call also in, in short eSpace. So let, let me have some quick words on uh, what Renato say uh, and, and then I'll leave you the floor to, to the meeting. Right. So I will start with this uh, famous sentence, Houston, we have a problem. As uh, mentioned by Renato, I mean, launch costs are decreasing. Uh, there's a lot of progress in miniaturizations, which means there's more and more service from space, Earth observation, navigation, communication, exploring the universe, which is something I do every day with like the Hubble Space Telescope or other telescope we have up there. And uh, so we see saturation of low Earth orbits and geogestion stationary orbits. Uh, we have this issue of space debris that are growing, and we have also this, this likely possible and interesting mega constellation coming up. And we have some uh, possibly space, uh, uh, sorry, lack of effective space law because it's, it's kind of complex uh, Earth orbit. Uh, are basically belonging to everyone, but then we don't really have a way to rule all these systems. So in, in some words, we could say that space today is, an, is not sustainable. Yet our human economy depends more and more on space infrastructures. So we have to do something. So the vision we have at EPFL uh, is to face reality and take responsibility. As uh, Renato mentioned, I mean, we launched SwissCube in 2009, but soon after we realized that uh, the orbit of the, this particular CubeSat uh, was possibly going to become a threat to uh, the, the infrastructure in orbits uh, because it's, it's gonna stay for a very long time. 
um, because you know it's up there for more than 25 years. Um, so we we worked on the mission concept, which was called Clean Space One. Uh, uh, soon after basically the launch, starting in 2012 or so. And the idea was to go and collect SwissCube as a demonstrator that effectively you can, you go and, and re retrieve from uh, the space some debris up there. So the idea was so successful that we are now engaged with ESA and the startups ClearSpace to go and collect a much bigger debris and more dangerous one, which is the Vega Vespa adapter. So we aim to imagine and develop a sustainable future for the space ecosystem. And we aim to participate in what we call the grand transition as uh, Guido Palazzo, our colleague at uh, HSC Lausanne is uh, telling uh, that we need to change our economy. So we started in 2019 a research initiative uh, called Sustainable Space Logistics. It basically, um, fit on two concepts. First is the sustainability, which is the you know current ideas and new thinking idea that uh, we are limited Earth and there's no plan B and we have to do with what we have. And this is becoming a European and UN priority. And the other part is the logistics, the practical holistics uh, to shift space system design drivers from performance to cost and schedule. So in, in the cloud around sustainable space logistics, we can see different things like reusable launchers, in-orbit servicing, debris removal, in-orbit assembly, maybe for future space telescope or space infrastructure, resource extraction on the moon, refueling of current uh, satellites to make them better and longer lived. So we are developing technology uh, in terms of active debris removal and in-orbit servicing. We have a partnership with Clear Space One mission, uh, in particular looking at the capture system, the in-orbit 6D pose determination, uh, the relative navigation that has to be done completely automatically uh, when you want to grab a, a debris. But we're also thinking on what to do next after Clear Space One. We want to put more artificial intelligence, for example, for pose estimation of multiple debris removal servers. We are also interested to develop space situational awareness through development of optical ground-based tracking and characterization of satellites. We have also been developing new ideas. Uh, in particular, we have a PhD project to connect space logistics with architecture in trying to minimize and optimize uh, the, the full concept of a mission. And here is an example of uh, going to the moon. And you can imagine different ways in, in going to the moon. And you want to optimize and make this way to the moon and the use of the moon in, in as sustainable as possible. Finally, as another example, we are developing scenario planning. And this is a, a quick example of what could be the moon in 2040. Uh, we need to define uh, uh, K uncertainties and we need to you know, check what are the variables and whether this can become like what we call the moon valley, like you know, a big economy. But of course, here are the big uncertainties is whether you can use resources and use resources in an efficient way and sustainable way on the moon. So this is a few words I wanted to say. Um, I will leave the floor to the rest of the meeting. Thanks for joining from everyone who's participating to this workshop. And let's work together to make a better future in space.